finding the right architecture software can be difficult. And that is why I wanted to make the decision for you easier by comparing Twinmotion and D5 Render. These are the two renderings I created in each software. I'll compare the software based on seven categories. Pricing, quality of asset, workflow, unique features, rendering speed, the future of each software, and the quality of the final renderings. So before you can start creating amazing renderings, let's see how difficult each of these softwares are to download. Here's a side-by-side -side comparison to see which one's faster and easier. To download Twinmotion, you will first have to download the Epic Games Launcher. And then from there, you will be able to search and download Twinmotion. E5 Render is a lot more straightforward. All you have to do is go to the website and download it straight from there. With Twinmotion and D5 Render, you can install Live Sync plugins that seamlessly connect to most 3D modeling softwares. It took me roughly 25 to 30 minutes to download Twinmotion just because I had to get two separate applications. D5 was a lot faster. It only took me about 15 minutes to install. Now let's talk about pricing for each of the software. Twinmotion and D5 both offer free student versions and community versions. With Twinmotion, almost everything is included in the free versions, except you have a limitation to only export renders up to 2K quality. With D5, there are a lot more limitations on the free version with the materials and assets you have access to, but you can always upgrade to the D5 Pro version, which gives you unlimited access to everything, but is $360 a year or $38 a month, which is a lot cheaper than Twinmotion's commercial license of $750 per year. So depending on your budget, D5 might be a better option, but Twinmotion has more access for those looking for a free version. Next, we're going to compare the assets of each program, or specifically quality and quantity of the software. I'm going to share both screens side by side so that you can compare the similarity and differences of each program. First, we're going to go over the materials. Both software have an extensive library of high quality materials and as you can see here they're both very unique and offer a wide spectrum of different material types and styles one thing i did notice is d5 was a lot easier to navigate the library and find exactly what you needed sometimes with twin motion you had to start digging in order to find the perfect material and this is how the materials look real time on the model in real life materials are not going to be perfect and so by adding these decals and imperfections, it really adds realism to the quality of these materials and makes the final rendering output a lot more realistic. Next, we'll look at the people for both softwares. Twinmotion has a wide range of different styles for people, whether they're animated, posed, or even 2D cutouts. They also allow you to customize what the character is doing, as well as possibly what they're wearing. Now, D5 also has a large collection of characters and people but I don't think it compares quite to the customization that Twinmotion offers. Vegetation is the next category. The quality of the trees and vegetation isn't quite right. This can always ruin a render, but thankfully both have a great library of vegetation as well as a super high quality. One successful tool that both programs have is the paint tool, which allows you to quickly place trees and grass on the landscape, saving you a lot of time and improving your workflow. And the final thing I'll talk about in regards to assets are the objects and the sky. I'd say D5 has the edge here in terms of the quality of the objects that you can place, although I think Twinmotion has a larger library. And we'll go over some features that Twinmotion has later that give you the opportunity to add even more assets and materials to the program. Twinmotion's library of skies is massive in comparison to D5 render, and even the quality is a lot better. But later, I'll show you how D5 is using AI to create amazing skies. Overall, in the categories like people, grass, lighting, and the customization of materials, I think Twinmotion wins this. But when it comes to the quality and the quantity of the assets overall, I think D5 Render has the edge. Next, let's look at the ease of use and workflow for each software. One of the things that sets a software apart is how easy it is to use and if it helps make your workflow a lot faster in the design process. And I'm going to show the workflow that I did to create these renders in each software. First, let's start with Twinmotion. First thing I did is adjust the UV mapping in Twinmotion because if you do not adjust that, sometimes it applies the material incorrectly. And so I knew the building was gonna be concrete. I downloaded a couple different options and started dragging and dropping. The nice thing about Twinmotion is it doesn't take overly long to download. And if you don't like a material, you can easily drag and drop another material. And by having these materials downloadable, you have access to all of them but it saves a lot of space by not having them all downloaded. And so this is another perk of Twinmotion. In addition, in the properties, you can adjust a whole bunch of different settings, 
which is why I really like the customization of materials because initially when I placed this material, the UV and the sizing was incorrect. But from there, you're able to adjust it super easy as well as add grudge, which is more of like a dirty finish on the material because usually the material when you see it in real life is not perfect. And this is another thing in addition to imperfections that Twin Motion does really well, enhance the realism. One thing I like about Twin Motion is you can place groups of people. I always hate how long it takes to individually place people around the scene. And by having set groups that you can already drag and drop into the scene, saves you a lot of time and also populates large spaces a lot faster and saves you a boatload of time. Next, I wanted to populate the scene with more objects to liven up the space. I'm just kind of dragging and dropping, seeing what works, and then adding some decals to finish it off. By using the vegetation paint, I'm able to save a lot of time on placing context and other things around the scene because you're able to populate so much space in so little time. And also is a way to make your grass a lot more realistic because you can mix up the different types of grasses that you want to paint together. I went ahead and started adding some vegetation to the scene, like bushes, because it's gonna give it some more variation and context. Next, I'll go over my workflow with D5 Render. And just like Twin Motion, you have to download the materials really quick and then you're able to place them with the eyedropper tool. It's a similar process as Twin Motion. You can quickly download materials and drag and drop to test them out. Personally, I think the quality of these materials is a lot better just because of the contrast and depth provided, but it also depends on the type of material you're using and the lighting that you have in the scene. And it must be that surface that is giving these rendering software some problems because I've had some issues trying to place the materials in it and the UV map is not showing up correctly. I really like this cobblestone-like material. As you can see, it, the depth was a little too much at first, but it just really shows the quality and the realistic capabilities of these materials. And later in the video, I'll show how D5 is using AI to help you create your own custom materials with texture maps. I'm not a big fan of the D5 render 3D people. So instead I opted to place the 2D cutouts in the scene. And honestly, that might be something I do going forward because the quality of these cutouts is drastically improved from the 3D figures, which sometimes look a little bit weird when you get up close. And one thing that can make or break a scene is the camera angle and the way that you set up the composition. Because if you're getting a bad angle of the building or the alignment is off, the overall quality of the render is already ruined no matter how much effort and time they put into it. And again, I'm just gonna populate the scene with vegetation. Some of these trees are way too big and taking up a lot of space realistically would not be this way. There'd be more spacing between the trees. And so that just comes down to adjusting the settings in D5 when you place them but you have the full capability to customize, scale, and change them to fit the need of what you're doing. Next, I'm gonna add a car and maybe some animals. I've never seen something like this available for a 3D modeling software, so I added some bunny and then a deer. You know, it could be a pretty interesting feature to see at the end of the rendering when I end up comparing them. Now, this tree backdrop is also a great idea or an alternative to a vegetation paint tool. If you put this in the background behind some context. It basically does the same thing as the vegetation paint, but would cut down on the storage of the overall file because it's just a flat image. And then now I'm just placing some assets like rocks and benches to fill up the scene. And in the background, you can kind of see the deer being animated, eating some grass that's not there, but I think that's a cool feature, just kind of random. Next, I'm gonna show both software side by side, showing the workflow of this cafe scene within the project, just so you can get a feel of how long it takes and how easy it is to place assets creating a similar scene. I know I edited that workflow down just a little bit, but your workflow with Twin Motion was a little bit faster than D5 Render in terms of how long it took me to complete the scene. I also think it was very easy to place assets in both scenes. Everything was easily labeled, so I knew where to go when I wanted to find something. When it comes to user interface, Twinmotion definitely has the edge as well as the overall workflow because it was faster for me and definitely more effortless. But even after that, D5 is still close behind Twinmotion. So far you've learned about pricing, the quality of assets, and the workflow of each software. But things are neck and neck and about to heat up because these next four categories will break down features that'll help you figure out which software is better, starting with their unique features. Twinmotion has a variety of unique features that set them apart from other softwares. For instance, they have the capability to do walkthroughs with VR technology. And then for rendering outputs, they have Lumen Render 
and path tracing render. And I'll show you the results of both at the end of the video. In addition, in Twinmotion, you can fill openings with doors. And so when you do a walkthrough, the door opens as you get close and closes when you leave. And finally, the Megascan library of assets and Sketchfab library are two key components to enhancing the materials and the assets that you can use in Twinmotion. So let's check out some of the materials in the Megascan library. If you thought Twinmotion didn't have enough materials, well, here are a ton more. It almost seems like an infinite library of materials and it breaks down each material into a bunch of different categories. In addition, the Megascan library has a ton of assets that you can place. And if you want even more assets that were customized by a community, you can go into the Sketchfab library and here you can download these and bring them into the Twinmotion file. And through the Sketchfab library, they take a little bit longer to download, but then once they have, you can just drag them into the scene. One of my favorite features is the section box. And essentially what that is, is it takes a section cut of your building in 3D. It gives you the ability to adjust and dragging these faces to create the perfect section. And so if you're doing like a section perspective or a floor plan that you want rendered, this is the tool to give you the best results. And as I mentioned before, you can simply drag a door into an opening, it recognizes it, and you walk through it opens, and then it closes, just like magic. And this is something that is very simple, but a great feature Twinmotion has. In addition, you can also animate people and objects. So all you have to do is drag and drop this animation trigger, and then you'll have to designate the axis that you want it to travel on, and then you can adjust the speed and the direction. So this is great for a video, where you want cars driving, people walking, possibly the building coming together. B5 is definitely stepping up their game when it comes to AI tools. They added the AI atmosphere match tool. And as you remember before, I mentioned how limited the sky options were in D5 render, but this completely changes the game because you can bring any sky from the internet and bring it into D5 and it'll use AI to take those characteristics and colors from that image and create a scene based around it. I would say this tool is super cutting edge. And if you thought AI couldn't get any crazier, this next D5 feature might blow your mind. You can bring in any image of a material into D5 render. And then from there, it uses AI technology to create texture maps for that image, like normal maps, roughness maps, depth maps, giving it more realistic depth and shadow in your renderings. These unique features definitely set these softwares apart and make them unique in their own way. Although I really love the AI tools D5 Render has, I think Twinmotion has more unique features that set themselves apart not only from D5, but from the rest of the industry. But because these features are so different, it's sometimes hard to compare apples to oranges. The next category, we're gonna be talking about the longevity of these softwares. This is something that a lot of people don't necessarily think about, but I felt like it was an important topic to bring up. What I mean by longevity, yeah, where are these softwares gonna be in five to 10 years? Now from my research, I found Twinmotion is about six years old. Tell me in the comments below if I'm wrong and D5 is four years old. So Twinmotion is a little bit older, but I think they've had some more experience in the game and D5 has been up and coming. Not as many people know about it yet. Twinmotion is currently focused on more than just architecture. People use it for product design and animations. So it's trying to create a software based on multiple different disciplines. Whereas D5 Render is mainly focused on architecture. And this is where you can see they have the step up over Twinmotion because all their focus is going into architecture and tools that benefit architects and architecture design. So the AI atmosphere match, the AI material creation, those tools are very tailored to our industry. And that is why I think D5 is trying to step up and be ahead of the game when it comes to technology, AI, and being in the right spot five to 10 years from now. Although I think Twinmotion is still doing a great job with the quality of the renders and all the features they're including, I think D5 wins this category just because of their forward thinking and trying to get ahead of the competition. The next category is rendering speed, and I'll be going over the settings that I use to create these renders. For Twinmotion, I used both Lumen Render and Path Tracer. To render a 2K quality rendering, it took me three to four minutes in Lumen and eight minutes with Path Tracer. And it took me about five minutes to render the D5 scene at 2K quality. Now here are the settings I used. I like to turn off the auto exposure and then just individually adjust the slider for exposure because I think it gives a more realistic lighting. In addition, I used one of the 
skyboxes that Twin Motion has, and it gives a really high quality sky. I adjusted some of the camera angles. I wanted to really focus on the composition using the composition grid, and then also adjusting the contrast and the saturation to make this more of a moody render. But other than that, the quality of the render is just based on whether you do a lumen render, typical Twin Motion render, or path trace render. Because I had to adjust the settings in terms of lighting and exposure based on which rendering choice I chose. And then for DU5 render, the thing that makes the biggest difference is the sky you choose. It affects the lighting and also the coloration of the model in general. And so you do have to mess with the exposure and some other settings, but really both softwares are very straightforward when it comes to rendering. And I'd give the edge to Twin Motion when it comes to the speed of the render, as well as all the settings that you're able to adjust and customize to perfect the scene. This is the moment you've all been waiting for. So let's break down the final quality of all the renders side by side by side. So the top two are the twin motion renderings, Lumen on the left and Path Trace on the right. And at the bottom is D5 render. And immediately you can tell the difference in shadow quality as well as the lighting. I'd feel like the lighting is good in all of them, but I think the top two for twin motion have the most realistic and softest light, which provide a great reflection and shadow on the materials and other assets. And even the quality of the street and the overall scene are a lot better in twin motion. When it comes to the D5 rendering scene, I really like it. And personally, I think it looks really good. It just doesn't look realistic when you put it up against the twin motion renders. Like isolated as its own image, it's a really good image. That being said, I think the Lumen render provided the best quality of vegetation out of all three of them. I think the D5 render has the best shadows from the assets and the vegetation. I think the best feature of the path tracer rendering was the sky. This is just my opinion. So down in the comments, leave which one you think is the best. And if you wanna see how these software compare to the rest, then you wanna watch this video next.